Hey guys, got a bit of a different video for you today and I hope you enjoy it. So we are in the middle of ripping out our kitchen right now. One week in and so far we've managed to avoid eating any takeaways, which I think is pretty good going personally. Big batch cooking and leftovers for the win, I think. Okay, fine, we got Duncan's mum to cook for us a couple of times too. <laughs> so as you can see, the contents of our kitchen are distributed messily around the rest of the house. It kind of feels like we're living in a bit of chaos right now. So the point of showing you this though is that in the cupboard we discovered these cool old fondue pots. And you may be wondering how we discovered these in our own kitchen, but the answer is because we actually bought this house from Duncan's mum and there's kind of a lot of stuff in the house from like 20 years of living here and most of it's been sorted and organised, but there's still a few bits and bobs sort of lying around. But that's okay, occasionally we make these awesome discoveries like these fondue pots. <laughs> So I really love the look of these pots and I have finished my most recent sketchbook which I will share with you guys soon. So I was kind of scouting around to see which sketchbook I wanted to use next and off the back of my recent video about sketching on toned paper, which you can check out in the corner here, I wanted to play around a bit more on toned paper myself. So I actually sketched this on the same day as I went out to meet up with uh, Urban Sketches Johannesburg and to that sketching event I took my Hahnemühle watercolour toned sketchbook out with me. Here's a small clip of that and if you want to see my sketch vlog about that event, it was really cool, like in this place called Victoria Yards, you can actually head over to Patreon where I share all sort of my behind the scenes stuff as well as a bunch of other interesting content so go and check that out. But for this sketch I thought I would try my other tone sketchbook which is The Grey Book, and it's also by Hahnemühle. Now, this sketchbook is not really suitable for wet media. I had no real plan at all going into this sketch, but I thought I'd f sort of flick the camera on to film it just in case, you know, and, and let's just see what kind of comes out. So I started sketching the big shapes with pencil, and very quickly I realised I'd not fit the pots on the page very well, but I thought I would leave it. I've been really craving, and I'm not actually sure if that's the right word, but a need to become much looser and more playful in my sketching. So I'm almost trying to force myself into a different sketching illustration style. And I'm pretty obsessed with the work of urban sketches like Inma Serrano right now. I don't really know what it is, but that playful style is just speaking to my soul at the moment. So you know what, I'm just going to go with the flow and sort of see where it takes me. So I got out my Sailor Feud Fuday pen, as this always helps me loosen up. Um, the varying line weight and my personal sort of lack of control over the pen makes for some quite spontaneous mark making. I then switched to this Zebra hard tip brush pen for a tiny bit more control on the left hand side pot. And I just wanted to make something like really bold, you know. This paper is, while it's thin-ish, it's very smooth. So the pen glides over it really nicely. And as someone who sketches on textured paper like 99% of the time, it takes a little bit of getting used to the smoothness and how the pen moves across the page. So I actually thought I was going to use some watercolour pencils without water um, for the colour um, in this sketch, but then I realised I don't really have a very good variety of colours. I've only kind of got sets of 12 and I thought I was going to find it a bit tricky to get across the copper pots. Kind of after scanning around my room here, my eyes settled on these old Spectrum Noir watercolour markers. So they're pretty old, they're years old, and uh, my mum actually bought them for me. Thanks mum. And I shipped them over from the UK recently, so I've only just got them back. And yeah, there seemed to be like a reasonable spread of colours. I don't know if, the, if it was going to work out or how they were going to work out on the paper either, but in the spirit of letting go and of experimentation, I thought, why not? So now you guys are you're gonna have to <laughs> you're gonna have to hang in there and just like trust me. Because this sketch is gonna look pretty ugly for a while, I'm not gonna lie. But I think it works out pretty cool in the end. So sit tight, let's ride out the ugliness together. 
So small interlude here guys, if you have not heard, I am reopening the doors to my course Sketch Your Adventures. It's my ink and watercolour sketching course of several hours, along with loads of bonus content as well, including live demos and stuff like that. It opens on Wednesday the 26th of January, this is 2022, only if you are on my special list for my most special people, which you can join below. And yeah, I'll see you on the inside. So we're going to learn to sketch. We're going to learn to let go of our self-confidence issues. And we're just going to break down all kinds of barriers. It's going to be awesome, I promise. So, okay, back to this experiment. I'm starting out by testing some colours actually off screen. And I'm testing them on white paper, which is not ideal as I am actually sketching on grey paper. But I guess I thought I'd get the gist of what colours I'm dealing with. And I didn't really think this through, but actually what I found to be a good strategy is I ended up with a group of three markers for the copper pots and a group of three markers for more of the brassy coloured plates underneath them. And the three colours, they form the lightest shade of the pot, the mid shade, and then the darkest shade. So I think this strategy means that even if you don't have quite the right colours, if you have a set of three different tones of one colour, um, then you can you can get it to look you can still get it to look okay because if you get the tones right the lights the mids and the shades then things kind of work out. So I can promise you guys, as I'm pretty sure you can already tell, I really had no idea what I was doing here. I was just hoping for the best. So I'm way out of my comfort zone here. A using tone paper like that doesn't accept watercolor and B using these markers which I probably haven't picked up for quite a long time. But I was also having loads of fun. I wasn't massively intending to share this footage, so that I just took the pressure off myself. Yes, I was filming it, but I wasn't really, you know, I was like, probably won't share this. But then I thought, you know, it actually did come out okay, and actually maybe me showing some vulnerability and explaining that I had no real idea of what was going on <laughs> may, may encourage you guys to get those supplies out and just start sketching and not worry about the result. And this is kind of kind of where I go with my sketching course as well you know it's like you just got to go for it and the more you go for it and the more you do it you can't help but get better at it and you just have to have fun the whole the whole way through so anyway I thought I'd throw in a bit of cheeky light blue on the front of this pot just to form a bit of a highlight again it was an experiment but I think it contrasts really nice with like the orange of the pots you know because compl complementary colors and all that once I had, I, I do get my water brush out here. I was just trying to see if it was going to blend at all, the, water, the markers, just to make those edges less severe, but it didn't seem to really do anything, to be honest, so I kind of left that alone. But yeah, so I just kind of building up the layers. Uh, the marker's a bit streaky on the paper, so again, I was like, well, I just don't know how this is really going to turn out, to be honest with you. But I just kept going and I think no matter how rubbish you think your sketch is looking, and I, I know I've said this in a whole bunch of other videos too, but no matter how rubbish it's looking, just keep going, just keep going until you really absolutely can't do any more and then step back and see what you think. And then go away for a few hours because I step away and I look immediately and I'm like, oh no, it's just rubbish. And then I, I I leave it for a few hours and I come back and open my sketchbook again. And I'm like, oh, do you know what? This is actually not bad. Like I can see, yeah, I can see some character in this. I can see some fun in this. It's actually not that bad. So um, I highly recommend that strategy as well. Something I did forget to mention actually is for the white, the white highlights, this was really fun, especially on the gray paper. So I'm using a Zig Posterman paint marker but I mean a Posca paint marker same thing and that really popped on the grey paper as well it was really nice so sorry forgot to mention that about the white highlights once I'd sort of somewhat finished these pots I thought hmm I feel like putting some lettering in which I never really do anymore anyway so I thought yeah okay I could kind of see, it was weird I could kind of see it on the page like going down the bottom and then up up around the page so that was completely intentional that wasn't me like misjudging the space it was like I wanted it to start at the bottom and and go up and after a bit of a failed attempt with a blue metallic marker I felt called cool to sort of pick up this bright yellow Posca paint marker I have in my pot 
So I slapped some of that on and then I felt it was missing something. So I decided just to add some writing in about the pots and why they were significant at this very moment in my life. I Again, I just don't ever really do this at all, but it felt very cathartic and I felt like just pretty cool just capturing this little snapshot in time of, of my day, of my life. So... That's kind of how I came to producing this unexpected illustrated journal page. That's how that ties back to the title. It was just like, it just flowed, you know? I'd had no plan at all and it just all kind of flowed out of me, which was just really nice. But tell me guys in the comments, like, do you do, you do much illustrated journaling? I mean, I, I sketch things around me quite a lot, but I never really add writing to it. Um, so yeah, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear more about your experiences of illustrated journaling. And also, let me know, do any of you use this grey book by Hanamila? I'd be really curious to know which art supplies um, you use in this book to add colour and stuff like that. Yeah, drop me a comment below, guys. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video.